Your go-to acne spot treatments, face washes, and even sunscreens can lead to blood cancer. Dozens of products from popular brands like Proactive, Clearasil, and Walgreens are potentially exposing you to a dangerous carcinogen. The newest lawsuit claims these companies fraudulently marketed and sold acne face washes, creams, and other products when they knew that these products degrade to benzene, a dangerous carcinogen. One claim is that they failed to follow FDA protocol on product testing before putting them on the consumer market, which may have left millions of people of all ages at risk. If you've ever used skincare, you'll want to keep watching because you might be at risk. Hit and like that subscribe button to keep up to date. So some acne treatment brands like Proactive, CVS, Walmart, even Neutrogena and Target, there's a lawsuit against some of these um, acne products and treatments that they have out there. So we're really familiar with benzene and typically benzene is is something that we see in an industrial setting. And now there's been some rumor that some consumer products have benzene in them, sunscreen, but to find out all of this stuff you put on your face right near your nose, mouth and eyes right. uh, has potentially cancer causing agents. Uh, I think it's a big surprise to a lot of people right now. Right. Which I mean, everyone has breakouts right so you go to the store you put it on your face and you don't expect it that it's going to cause cancer or it's going to turn into a carcinogen that's like in your shower because it's exposed to heat and now it's degrading because it's not benzene in the product directly it is a different chemical that's in the product that then degrades into benzene. Yep. Benzyl peroxide mm-hmm. is the allegation, and, and we'll show you here. This is a class action filed in the United States District Court for the Central District of California, Los Angeles Division. Uh, there's several different manufacturers involved, and we can we can link to those. It's all the common ones you mentioned, Clearasil, Proactive, um, some of the generics, all that stuff. But let's talk about how dangerous benzene is because it's a category one carcinogen and it can cause blood cancer. It's no doubt that benzene is very dangerous. World Health Organization, the group of doctors from an international uh, organization, you know, 30 countries have determined it causes blood cancer. Mm -hmm. And it's one of the major contaminants at Camp Lejeune, one of the most contaminated sites where we're doing a whole bunch of work. So that's my background in benzene was all the benzene, high benzene levels at Camp Lejeune. I mean, even the FDA guidance on benzene is, quote, in small amounts over long periods of time, benzene can decrease the formulation of blood cells and long-term exposure to benzene through inhalation, oral intake, and skin absorption may result in cancer such as leukemia and other blood disorders. So So why is it on our shelves? And targeted at children specifically, you're talking about- Well, all ages, I mean, anyone. But who's using acne medication the most? High school kids? Middle schoolers to a typically like early adulthood. When we look at what companies do when they design products, it's really interesting to look back at their design files and their marketing files. That's what we do every day here. And you see the emails um, going back and forth. Is this a problem? Is that a problem? There's the design history file and the chemical makeup and um, how do we manipulate it in a way that we can sell a whole bunch of product. and. There's many, many chemists and scientists at these companies that are smart enough to figure this stuff out. It's a, it's a product, you obviously store it in your bathroom, it gets hot in your bathroom, and benzene peroxide, according to the chemist in this study, breaks down and becomes benzene. And it's right next to where you breathe it. Yeah. And, and you can absorb it through your skin and uh, Multiple other ways. Multiple ways. Yeah, pa- different pathways. Well, and I find it interesting because it's not the first lawsuit like this there's been one against sunscreen a few years ago of all these different types of sunscreen that have been involved with uh, benzene exposure so it's a known issue and yet it this benzyl peroxide is still being used and not labeled correctly i guess would be the problem yeah and and all these companies they're marketing themselves as industry leaders and industry experts and they're using all these chemicals and what is the reasonable testing that should be required for these companies? Mm-hmm. What testing are they doing and what testing are they intentionally not doing? Um, is it a mistake? Is it intentional? I think these lawsuits are gonna flush that out. Or why is this ingredient even allowed in these products to begin with? I mean, this is just yet another product in the beauty industry that is causing people harm, like hair relaxer is one. Yeah, and you, you see the common thread, what's regulated by who? Um, and if it's a medication that's prescribed, 
there's very strict um, testing guidelines, phase one, phase two, phase three. And a lot of these beauty products are not subject to those same testing requirements. I think they should be. There are so many people that use it. Like you should know what's in your products before you put them on. Yeah, so I'm, I mean, we're interested to hear from the, the people out there. This is, this is really new. This study came out not a long time ago. The lawsuit came out not a long time ago, but we see the common thread over the last few years, this, this beauty industry or consumer products industry and uh, potentially dangerous things. So I guess we would turn it over. Like, what do you guys think about it? Well, what do you think is gonna happen with this lawsuit? Do you think it's gonna become we're, a huge lawsuit like um, hair relaxer or Ozempic or you know cases that we do? I think, so we're investigating. I didn't know about this. I mean, we we try to keep up to date on what's going on, but the question is, yeah, benzene certainly causes cancer, but I guess what we're looking for, is that actually happening? Mm -hmm. Is there cancer being caused like there is in Hair Relaxer, in our opinion? Are the people who are using these products actually getting blood cancer? If you have, we'd, we'd like to talk to you. And mm -hmm. I guess we're going to investigate and see what the actual the rates are. And that'll determine whether or not this becomes in addition to, it's a class action because these companies should not be selling things that could potentially hurt people. Mm -hmm. um, but there's also a question, is this going to be a personal injury case for the people who were harmed? Well, in order to have a personal injury case, you have to have been actually harmed. And my suspicion is there are a lot of people who have been harmed. Um, so if you have, let us know. But until we know what that looks like. You know, I hope no one has been harmed, and if not, we're not gonna have a personal injury case because nobody's sick. I, I hope we're all wrong about that. Right. Do you think this is fear mong I can't even say the word. <laughs> fear mongering? Say it again, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, I don't think it is. I mean, you're talking about toxic chemicals and potentially cancer. It is, when you're talking about these huge corporations, we put so much trust in them, and we need to be able to trust that they're putting out products that are safe for us. Um, and I think people talk about plaintiff lawyers, whether they're ambulance chasing or fear mongering or whatever derogatory term you want to use. But would cigarette companies still be selling cigarettes to kids if plaintiff lawyers didn't do what they're doing? Would the, the you know, would asbestos still be out there if plaintiff lawyers hadn't sued asbestos companies? I think there are really important issues. And as we learn more about toxic exposure, we've learned so much about toxic exposure in the last 10 years. And the World Health Organization tells us that this chemical is without a doubt a class one carcinogen. It is the responsibility. I think everybody is coming to terms with it is the responsibility of big corporations to protect the people they're selling stuff to and making a tremendous amount of money off of. I don't know what the... Um, how much money there is in the acne market, but I, I'm sure it's a multi-billion dollar yeah. industry. Um, the shareholders are making their money, and if we're doing that on the backs of victims, that's not okay. Mm -hmm. it, wh whether it's hair relaxer or or Clearasil or, or any other toxic exposure um, firefighting foam. Mm -hmm. I feel like this is just the tip of the iceberg. I mean, the beauty industry is billion, billions of dollar industry, and Honestly, the the products that are used in these, or the ingredients that are used in these products, should they even be allowed to be used to begin with? And I guess that's more or less like the FDA needs to maybe kind of review what's allowed in, in products, I think, that's my opinion. Well, it's something that everybody can really agree on. Basic products should be safe. And as we learn more about how toxic chemicals affect the human body, the laws have have to catch up. You know, these laws were written that we're talking about 50 or 60 years ago. What laws are appropriate based on the science that we have today? In some ways, we're trying to put kind of a, a round peg in a square hole to use these laws to make things happen. And, and you get all these class action lawsuits and whether it's PFAS and orange juice or um, mm -hmm. asbestos and talcum powder or mm -hmm. talc, contaminated talc uh, cases or whatever those things are. And I think there's going to be cases involving PFAS chemicals in beauty products, di different consumer products. Those oh, these things are going to keep is. on, they're going to keep coming. Yeah. We're behind already, especially in comparison to other countries who don't allow specific ingredients in any of their products, which, but then we allow it. 
So we already know that all these chemicals are bad for us, yet they're still allowed in our products. There's always the question of corporate interest and how do lobbyists prevent laws from affecting big business? You know, the big businesses have the money, they hire the lobbyists, they control the laws, and groups And we of get in- poisoned. Right, well, how do groups of individuals fight back for their health? You know, what does that look like? Is, is that a role of elected officials? Is it a role of law firm and law firm owners? Is it a combination? Mm-hmm. Um, you know, what can people do? Or is it a matter of proper labeling? Like what if someone, whatever it might be, decides like, you know what, the risk is worth it to me and I'm gonna do it anyway. Is that something that's more appropriate action is just being having it labeled? Well, I think that there are different scenarios in different cases. So when we talk about Ozempic, there's some risk, inherent risk, and it's typically prescribed to adults and they can make that choice because of all these things. We talk about choices and informed choices and maybe that wasn't always there with Ozempic and Wagovi and Mm -hmm. things like that. To me, when you're talking about benzene and cancer in a product that goes to children, that's not a warning thing for me personally. That's a, we gotta not do this thing. Right, right, I agree. Uh, we try to get the word out when we learn things through the, that's kind of what we do is we learn these really specific things through lawsuits, but how can we use those things to inform the general public? Right. Um, and that's what we're doing here. So if you'd like that information, you can follow us and yeah. um, look at some of our old stuff. We, as, as lawsuits come out and there's one a month or you know, one every few weeks, we try to break them down the best we can. Right.